Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to work with math properties. Properties. At this level of math, there are four main properties that we're going to be working with. The first three are commutative property, associative property, and the identity property. These three I grouped together because they are similar in one small way and that is all of these types of properties work when your problem is entirely made up of addition or it's entirely made up of multiplication. So here's two examples. 5 plus 7 plus 1. This problem only has addition in it. It also only works um, when the problem is entirely made up of multiplication, so for example, 9 times 2 times 3, there's only multiplication in this uh, example. The last property that we're going to deal with is the distributive property. I'll explain to you how to use the distributive property with some examples at the end of this video. Let's jump into the commutative property. Commutative property. If you hear the word commutative, you may recognize a root word in it of commute. If you hear someone talking about their daily commute, they're typically talking about the trip that they take from home to work. Okay? I think that's a really great example to use here because it really has the same premise. The root word is the same, and that's why this particular property was named this. Let's look at this example. 5 plus 1 equals 1 plus 5. The commutative property explains that if I have a problem and it's only made up of addition or multiplication in that problem, in this case our problem is made up of addition, I can reverse the position of the numbers and that problem would still be equal to itself. So if I have 5 and I add 1, that is the same thing as having 1 and adding 5. So just like someone starts at home, let's pretend like the number 5 is home and the number 1 is work. You could say the distance from going from home to work is equal to the distance from coming from work and going home. Okay? That makes sense, right? They're equal. It doesn't matter which way you put them. You could flip them. You could commute them to a different position. As long as the entire problem is made up of addition, it doesn't matter where the numbers are, the numbers will always still equal each other even though they're in different positions. Let's look at another example. 4 times 6. This time our example has multiplication. That is no problem. It still applies to the commutative property. We have 4 and we multiply times 6 and we get 6 times 4 the same value on both sides of the equal sign. Does it matter which way or which positions you put these numbers in? You're going to get the same thing. Okay, let's look at this third example. We have a variable in our problem, but that does not change a thing. It still works out to fit as a commutative property example because 7 plus b is going to be equal to b plus 7. B has to be the same thing both times. Let's say b is 3. I would have 7 plus 3, which is 10. And then I would have 3 plus 7, which is also 10. So it doesn't matter the position. So this even applies when you're dealing with variables. And last but not least, I decided to use this example because you do not always have to have a regular written out multiplication sign to represent multiplication. And it's still valid. It doesn't matter the order. The a is first this time. And that's still multiplied by 3. Here is the same thing. But it just looks different because it's written in a different order. But that's no problem. So, all problems are completely addition or multiplication. For the first one, we're only dealing with addition. Second one, only multiplication, only addition, and then only multiplication. Let's move on to the associative property. Associative property. We start out with 2 plus 1 in parentheses plus 9, and that equals 2 plus in parentheses 1 plus 9. Okay, if you listen to the word associative or say it a couple of times, you may think of another word that's similar to it, which is association. Okay, association is like a group, right? You know, at school you may have different associations. You may have 
this association or that association. Really, they're just groups. And that's a really great way to illustrate what this property is about as well. The associative property says that it doesn't matter what numbers that you choose to group in your problem, you are still going to have the same value. Again, this only works if your problem is entirely made up of addition or entirely made up of multiplication. But for this example, you can see we have only addition and only addition. If you look, our numbers are the same on the left side of the equal sign as they are on the right side of the equal sign. On the left side of the equal sign, we have a 2, a 1, and a 9. On the right side, we have a 2, a 1, and a 9. However, for the left side of our problem, the 2 and the 1 are grouped. On the right side, the 1 and the 9 are grouped. You're going to get the same answer. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 9 is 12. Over here, the 1 plus the 9 is 10. The 10 plus 2 is 12. So it doesn't matter. The associative property says that you could group any two numbers as long as your signs are addition or multiplication. You may be thinking, why would you want to change what numbers are grouped? Here's why. Let's say you want to do some mental math and you just need to add everything up here really quickly. You may think, ooh, to add 2 plus 1, off the top of my head, I can do that and get 3, but then... But then to add 3 to 9, that's a little more complicated. Like, I may not know what that is. Um, and this is a pretty simple example, so you probably know what that is. But you get the general gist. But over here, you may say, hey, it might be easier if I actually add that 1 and that 9 together first. Because then I'm working with the number 10. And everybody knows 10 is a much easier number to add to. You see, 10 is an easy number to work with. So if you can pull two numbers out of a problem and add those numbers together first or multiply those numbers together first to get an easier number to work with, that's what the associative property helps you realize that you're able to do. You can do that. You can pull out just the 1 and the 9 and get a 10. And that's so much easier to work with than like a 3. Okay? People know what something plus 10 is quickly. Let me show you another example. I have 7 times 4 times 5. So they started us with 7 and 4 being grouped. Now that might seem like a little complicated of an answer to deal with because you're going to end up with 28. And so you may think, I don't know what 28 times 5 is. That's kind of complicated. That's why they've switched the grouping up. They decided to say, hey, let's group the 4 and the 5 together first because that equals 20. And it's going to be easier for me to multiply 7 times 20 than 5 times 28. See, 20 is an easier number to work with because it ends in that 0. And you can kind of do that in your head. You can think, oh, well, I'll just take that 0 off and multiply the 2 from the 20 by the 7. And that gives me 14. And then I can just add the 0 on at the end. So this is really helpful when you're doing mental math. Okay? It helps you group quickly so you can solve a problem more quickly. So this rule, again, is simply telling you that you are allowed to do that when the problem is entirely multiplication only or entirely addition. Here's another example that has a variable in it. It does not matter which order you group in. You could switch even with the variable. You may be thinking, well, if you don't know what the value of the variable is, why would you want to do that? There could be all kinds of reasons. Um, when you get a more advanced math, you may see uh, let's say the number out here was a fraction, and you may think, ooh, well, I'd rather deal with the variable and a whole number than the variable and a fraction. So you may want to do that first, or whatever. It doesn't matter, but the principle still applies when you have variables in your problem. And last but not least, one more example with a variable and multiplication. As always, all problems are completely addition or multiplication in order for this to work. Let's move on to the identity property. The identity property. Here's an example of a problem that is using the identity property. 9 plus 0 equals 9. Okay, the identity property says that any number plus 0 equals that number. Okay, so we know that already because we know that adding 0 to something doesn't change the value. If you have $25 in your bank account and you add zero to it, uh, you're still gonna have $25, okay? I think we already know this even without, you know, doing math. 
So the identity property simply says that any number plus zero is going to be itself. It also says that any number times one is going to be itself. So remember the rule we have to use this for only addition or multiplication. For the identity property, the rule uses a little bit more thought because we have to specifically remember plus zero or times one because these are the two things that we use both times that don't change. So nine plus zero equals nine, but anything times one also equals that thing, the original number. So in this case, it's seven times one. So we also have a plus zero equals a. That's still true. And then b times one still equals b. It doesn't matter if you don't know what the values are. This also works for variables. So again, these properties only work if the problem is entirely addition or entirely multiplication. Don't try to apply these rules to an example that has like subtraction or division in it because you are not going to get your answer right. Okay? Only addition and only multiplication. Now let's jump into the very last property, the distributive property that I mentioned when we were on the very first screen. The distributive property. For the distributive property, you're usually going to see a set of parentheses with two separate numbers on the inside. So when you hear the word distribute, you may think of like passing out something because that's what distributing something is. If a teacher were to say, hey, distribute these papers around the class to the students then the teacher means pass those papers out, so give everybody one. Let's pretend like this too is the teacher, and the teacher wants to pass something out this time. So the teacher is now going to distribute from the teacher, which is the two, to the students, which are the numbers inside. The two goes to the 30, then the two goes to the 12. When you get to each number, you multiply them together so the 2 gets multiplied by the 30, and that gives you 60. Then I'm going to add. How do I know I'm going to add? Because there's an addition sign right here. Then 2 times the 12, that gives me 24. 60 plus 24 is 84. Let's try this next example. 5 to the 10 and then 5 to the 3. 5 times 10 is 50. And then I'm going to add. I know I'm adding because the sign right here is addition. Now 5 times 3 is 15. So I write that down. Now I add these two and I get 65. Now I'm going to come here. 3 times 100. 3 times 4. 3 times 100 is 300. I'm going to subtract this time. I'm subtracting because we're subtracting in the problem. They gave us subtraction in the beginning. 3 times 4 is 12. Now I'm going to figure out what that equals. 300 minus 12 is 288. And our last example for distributive property looks a little different. And what it is is they have given us our interior number um, already together. So I could have taken the 100 and subtracted 4 and it had 96 in the beginning and multiplied 3 times 96. But a lot of times, dealing with numbers like 96 is a little complicated. So what was done in these numbers was they took a larger number and broke it down in a way that made your multiplication easier. You see, they pulled out simple numbers in the beginning like 30, 10, 100, numbers that were easy to multiply by. 352 isn't all that easy to multiply by, so we could break it down ourselves. We could put a 4 on the outside. You have to keep the 4 on the outside, so I've already written that. But then on the inside, you could write 300, and you could write plus 52. And then close my parentheses. Now, what you write on the inside 
is fine as long as it equals the 352. And you could do that by subtraction or addition. I chose to use addition. So now I could distribute the 4 to the 300 and the 4 to the 52. 4 to the 300 is going to be 1,200. The 4 to my 52 is 208. Then the two of these numbers get added together. And that gives you 1408. That's my last example. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.